Welcome to Star Wars Action News, helping Star Wars collectors collect better. This is Brock, Star Wars Action News Book Club Liaison, with a spoiler-free as possible review of Star Wars Lords of the Sith by Paul S. Kemp. Review copy courtesy of Delray Books. Eight years after the Clone Wars, a small band of rebels on the planet of Ryloth are making trouble for the Empire with targeted attacks, jeopardizing the Empire's hold of this crucial planet. The Emperor decides to make an example of Ryloth and agrees to accompany Darth Vader and Orn Frita to the planet. Upon hearing both Vader and the Emperor are scheduled to arrive, Cham Saidula, leader of the Twi'lek Freedom Fighters, devises a plan to assassinate the heads of the Empire. Cham and his team will soon learn they have underestimated the resourcefulness of the Emperor and Darth Vader, just as the Emperor and Darth Vader quickly learn they have underestimated Cham and the Ryloth Rebels, as their Star Destroyer is surprisingly well attacked as they approach the planet. And that is how the adventure begins in Star Wars Lords of the Sith. Star Wars Lords of the Sith is a welcome return of fan-favorite author Paul S. Kemp to the Star Wars universe. You can find my reviews of some of his previous Star Wars works in the archives section at SWActionNews.com. Based on those previous books, I knew that even if I didn't care for the plot of this new novel, I was going to get some great writing, solid character work, and good Star Wars action. Well, thankfully, I got all that and more, and I was able to enjoy this entire package. Mr. Kemp was able to use what amounts to a very simple story of a coordinated attack on the leaders of the Empire to give us an action-packed novel with prose that just pops off the page. Now I say a simple story because Lords of the Sith has one storyline simultaneously told from three to four different perspectives. So it's similar to Star Wars movies where we see what different people or groups are doing for a bit, then switch to another plot line, but here it's the same story, same plot line. We just check in on different factions and what they're doing. And as a result, the book has a smaller feel, but gets quite intense at times, which is a nice trade-off for missing a larger sweeping scope. And peppered in, you will read how the author maximizes opportunities to create brief, efficient character moments that feel organic to the story, not tangential or shoehorned in. The assassination attempt is the key to the book because it is the entire book, literally. Once it starts, it does not stop until the book concludes. It provides a terrific spine for this novel, driving the action, always keeping it moving, and allowing the flexibility to slow down for the smaller moments. The assassination attack of the Star Destroyer amazingly lasts for chapters. As the damage keeps coming, the author expertly describes the cacophony of trouble the Empire finds themselves in, with my mind immersed with imagery of dogfights, explosions, space debris flying everywhere, waves of fighters coming in, blast radius issues, overwhelming odds. I loved how Darth Vader started to figure out what his antagonists were going to do next, and then realizing he was too late to stop it. <laughs> and the attack continues as they all make their way planetside as the Imperials land and head for their outpost. The action scenes are well-paced, well-written, and, a heads up, have a lot of deaths. There is slaughtering going on here with lightsabers, point-blank blaster shots to the back of people's heads, more of a body count and descriptive gore than you would expect, but thankfully the plentiful visceral carnage is not abrasively gruesome. Lords of the Sith is another one-off story that doesn't make grand continuity moves with this new canon, just like the other recent books in the EU reboot. Yet this book is the most successful novel so far in creating some connective tissue within the new canon. There is Clone Wars era tech like buzz droids and vulture droids being used by the Royal Oth Rebels, mixing it up with the newer Imperial Starfighters. Some of you may recognize the name Cham Saidula as he makes appearances in the Clone Wars cartoon and is revealed here that he has a connection to the current Star Wars cartoon, Star Wars Rebels, he is Hera's father. Need to see that apple hasn't fallen far from the tree. The idea of making the kind of move against the Empire that Cham's group attempts here, the right timing for that sort of thing, was brought up in another recent Star Wars novel as well as in the first season of Rebels, and to see it here can be thought of as a lesson learned. And there's plenty more. There are connections to the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy that are not just bad line lifts or reminisces strategically placed to elicit canned emotion. No, they play a role here in the character development of Darth Vader. The prequel material that doesn't always play well on the screen is given new life as Palpatine constantly tests Darth Vader's loyalty to him, the Empire, and the Dark Side as he is wanting Vader to bury those memories of his past. That it's a weakness that means he isn't completely loyal. The Emperor's mind games are sick. 
there's a key moment where Vader admits to the Emperor it crossed his mind for a moment to betray his master before he made the opposite choice to protect him. The relationship between the Emperor and Darth Vader was a highlight of the book for me, for sure. The author writes Vader beautifully in this novel, taking care to show us the cruel, brutal enforcer, the clever pilot, the strategic general, the sad man in an iron lung suit who has lost so much, and the constant slave, now to his Sith Master's bidding. Vader gets some terrific lines in here, right up there with the ones in Empire Strikes Back. And when he is in action, it is like the Force Unleashed video game, how he dispatches his enemies. Kemp also gives us moments of Vader's introspection. For example, the book opens up with some great stuff of Vader's connection to his armor that elicits strong emotional resonance. Kemp plays with the many angles of the Emperor as well. The false front public persona, the terrifying Sith Lord, the manipulative master. All the while we see him maintain his cunning focus of the big picture. And the man makes some cold statements. The Emperor's calculating ways are put to good use here. We even see him come across as charming and old and feeble and polite and gentle to some of the locals. And then, not a few scenes later, we see him throw down with Vader. At one point, back to back with him, lightsabers drawn and mowing down a pack of creatures. It's some chilling stuff. Some of the best Palpatine stuff since the Darth Plagueis novel. Cham Saidula is a character I hope we get to see more of sometime. I feel he could fit in well with the rebellion leadership we know from the movies. When we first meet Cham, he's telling himself, like a mantra, he's not a terrorist, but a freedom fighter. And that sentence spoke volumes to me, giving me an instant window into understanding this man and his mission. It is awesome we see him deal with doubt, showing us Cham is a thoughtful and insightful leader. The other rebel we spend the most time with is Isfel, a former dancing slave with a serious revenge complex. Isfel's actions are a nice counterpoint to Cham's, as they both want the same thing, but don't always agree on the best way to achieve it. Cham and the Emperor share the same struggle in that they know the importance of not only achieving the goal, but the importance in how you go about doing it. That's why the Emperor comes to Ryloth, and that's why Cham doesn't just go around killing everybody or sacrifice his own people to kill the Emperor. It's an unexpected yet gratifying parallel between two very different characters. Bel Cordre, the ambitious Imperial officer, his passages were my least favorite. He serves a definite purpose and is quite functional for the plot, yet I found it hard to connect at all to this character. Once the Emperor and Darth Vader are on the planet's surface, the Belcor passages became more and more tedious. One persistent complaint as the book went on was how the rebel characters in this book, especially Isfel, were constantly bewildered with Vader's superhuman abilities to take out dozens of men or survive direct attacks in a ship or choking her without touching her from many feet away. Now, what is surely frustrating to them, and a brilliant move by the author to include their frustration, if Vader and the Emperor weren't Force users, if they were normal men, you would see it is conceivable. The Rebels' plan actually almost works. They are humorously naive to what Vader and the Emperor are capable of at the beginning of the book, but surely they could have figured out Vader was a Force user after they saw him in action, and yet they keep going, tenaciously attempting to kill Vader and the Emperor. I found Star Wars Lords of the Sith to be the most satisfying book of the EU reboot to date. An exciting, fun read packed with Star Wars mythos, good character beats, terrific action scenes in space and on land, some good use of pre-existing materials, and full of characters that show us how strong and flawed they are throughout. Lords of the Sith gives me renewed hope of what is to come as we get deeper into this new EU and as we approach The Force Awakens. A definite recommend for Lords of the Sith. For Star Wars Action News and the Star Wars Action News Book Club, this is Brock. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Star Wars Action News with more collecting news and reviews at SWActionNews.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the pegs be stocked and the Force be with you.